Do you happen to own 20 bicycles that just won't fit in your garage? The answer is probably no, but I do, and that's been a first world problem for me for about two years now. So today, we're finally going to fix all of this mess. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Talalipop, and today, we are talking about this. This is my brand new garage setup, and I've been wanting to do something like this for over a year now, and I'm so excited and so, so, so happy that it is finally done. So today, we're gonna to talk about the product that made my garage dreams come true, and that is the Steady Rack wall-mounted bicycle rack. In this video, we'll go over what Steady Rack is, the unboxing, assembly, and setup process, including a lot of helpful tips like proper tools and other things that I learned, uh, especially since my garage is pretty abnormal, so there's a lot of issues I had to work around. Uh, and then finally, we'll give it my final review and my thoughts on it to see if it's worth the money. Also, since the audio quality in my garage isn't super great, I'll record some of the audio inside while I show you the racks. Now, for a background, I've known about Steady Rack for a while through various Instagram videos, but in the past, I wanted to save some money and get a simple Amazon bike rack for my garage, which is this one here. And it works great for the price, it's about $50 to $70 for both of them together, and it holds six bikes in total. But as you can see, I had to alternate putting one bike up and one down in order to get all of them to fit. And it requires lifting and a lot of maneuvering to get the bikes up into the hook that holds the rim of the bike. So not an ideal situation. But Steady Rack was always out of my price range because just one of these bike racks costs a hundred dollars retail. Uh, they're on sale right now for ninety dollars, but they only hold one bike, so definitely more expensive than the Amazon racks I had. But since I have a YouTube channel, I decided to reach out to them to see if they would send me any, and they agreed to send me two racks. So definitely shout out to Steady Rack for that. Um, but I liked the racks so much that I ended up buying eight more myself, which is definitely. A huge investment, but I think it's worth it for the bike collection that I have in a limited space. Now, I know most of you won't be able to get them for free, unfortunately, but don't worry. I do have a slight discount code at 15% off straight from Steady Rack. Uh, so if you are interested in getting one of these, just go to the checkout and type in the code TALAL15 to get 15% off for the next 30 days. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Okay, so Steady Rack has a few different options to choose from on their website. Uh, I pretty much only have mountain bikes, so I decided to just buy 10 mountain bike racks. But it did take me a while to figure this out since I was unsure if I might want to put a road bike up someday or a bike with fenders. And I actually almost ended up buying 10 of the e-bike fender compatible racks since they're supposedly just as durable as the other racks but can also accommodate e-bikes and bikes with fenders. So I was kind of thinking why buy a rack with less features and less bike compatibility when it's actually the same exact price for every single rack they offer. Uh, but after a lot of research, I decided that I did not like that the fender racks are not completely made out of metal, but rather have this rubberized, flexible black section for holding the wheel. And that's how they accommodate bikes with fenders. And it's probably durable, but it was just my personal choice to not go for that. And I also decided that a road bike would still fit on an MTB rack since the MTB rack is larger but a mountain bike would not fit on the classic road bike compatible rack, so I would be restricted if I got the classic rack. And actually on that note, I'll quickly show you that if you do put a road bike on the mountain bike rack, it does work, but the road tire will not fit snugly into the rack, and it thus won't be as stable as it could be, but the bike isn't gonna fall off or anything, it does work, so keep that in mind if you can't decide which one to buy. All right, but let's get into the unboxing and assembly. So each rack comes with its own box here. And as you can see, I have a lot of these boxes. So uh, pretty quick and easy unboxing here. Um, and here are all of the parts that come with one steady rack. So you have the installation instructions, but actually I'd recommend just watching the steady rack installation video on their YouTube channel, which is very, very helpful. And then you have the rack itself, a bag with all of the necessary screws in it and some extra black rubber tips for the rack, which is a nice touch. And it also has all of these white wall plugs. Uh, but you only use these if you are installing the racks into masonry, like bricks or stone. And you also get a thank you card and a sticker, as well as the two plastic end caps to put over the top and bottom of the rack to make it look nice and finished. And here are all 10 of my racks and all the parts laid out together. Uh, definitely a sight to see all of these at once, so that's pretty fun. And of course, I'm now left with a lot of extra parts and a lot of steady rack stickers. And the screws that come with the rack are metric, so 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter screws. And you definitely should use a drill to install these if possible, since they recommend putting them in your wall studs. And that brings me to my first hiccup in the process, 
which is having the proper tools. I have a drill set at home, but did not have any metric bits that fit these screws. So after a while of digging around at the store, I found that you need a 13 millimeter socket to fit around the bigger 10 millimeter screws and the smaller 8mm screws just use a normal Phillips head screwdriver. And unfortunately, that's just the beginning of my issues with installing these. Uh, now the problems I had did not have to do with the racks themselves, but rather the way that my garage is set up by my home builder. I'm going to explain all the issues I encountered now in case you happen to have the same problems in your garage and need some helpful tips. But if you are not interested in the setup section, please feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps in the video below to go straight to the installation and review. Okay, so I'm doing this one in person since it's probably easier to explain instead of doing a voiceover. Uh, but normally in your garage you would have drywall on the side going from the top to the bottom of the floor. Um, and that's kind of how Steady Rec wants you to install these bikes, right? So what they want you to do is take one of your bikes, lay it down with the rear wheel against the wall, and just kind of measure the length of the bike on the floor. And then you can transfer that measurement onto the wall. So it's a pretty simple installation process. However, in my garage, I have this weird eight inch concrete slab thing that I have to now avoid. So I kind of had to put all the bikes a little bit higher. Um, and I know you're thinking like, it's probably easy, right? All I do is add eight inches to each bike. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do until I realized that this whole section is actually sloped. So it's eight inches on this side, seven inches in the middle, six inches on that side. And that's just, you know, another issue, another thing I have to deal with. So what I, what I thought about doing was just adding eight inches to all of these racks and then adding seven to these and then six. So it ends up still working out. Uh, it's kind of annoying because one of the main features of the steady rack is that you're able to kind of just pick your bike up, roll it on the rear wheel and kind of just slide it into the rack uh, instead of having to lift your bike up over this concrete thing or lift it up at all. Uh, in order to put it on the rack since that's what I've kind of been doing with my old Amazon racks I've been lifting the bikes up into the stands and I basically just did not want to do that anymore Luckily with the way I ended up installing these I do not have to pick up most of them too much uh, So it is fine, but at the time it was really annoying and then on top of that I realized I would have to install this rear tire holder Which is a super important part of the rack since it kind of holds the tire in place when you're turning it side to side um and that would, you know, have to go wherever the rear tire hits the wall on the, on your actual garage wall. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a wall here. This is my actual drywall in the garage. Instead, I have this giant rectangular thing that's sticking out exactly where I want the rear tire holders to go. And this is actually housing drainage pipes for my water heater, which is right there. So now I had to dodge some pipes while installing, installing this uh, rear wheel tire holder. And on top of that, even... You know what? I'm just gonna show you the video I took. Problem number 10, probably, at this point. <laughs> the people who built our house, I guess, put a whole sheet of metal on this thing, which means I can't put the bottom tire rack holder right here. But there is good news that there is no metal here. But there are pipes in here, so we gotta be careful. Um, I really want this to work. <laughs> but it's just really fighting with me, so I'm gonna give it a shot. So it seemed like there was metal covering that entire section, but luckily we found a stud there and it's not completely covered in metal, but yeah, that was like our 10th plan change from when we started installing these and it was ridiculous and took like a full day just to plan out installing these. <laughs> All right, but let's talk about the installation. This took a while for me since I just bought so many of these, so I spent several days installing them when I had some free time here and there, but with every rack installed, I just felt so much happier that I was organizing my garage and that the bikes were actually fitting together without too much issue. I can't celebrate too quick, but our first rack is on. This is so crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so excited. It took us like three hours to get here. Uh, for my garage specifically, I decided to stagger the heights of the racks to accommodate different sized bikes. So actually what I ended up doing was measuring the shortest bike I had, which is my medium sized Trek Pro Caliber. And then I used that measurement to determine where I wanted all of my lower racks. And then I measured one of the largest bikes I had, which is actually my project bike, which is a size large Trek Powerfly. And then I made the taller racks at this height so I could kind of accommodate the largest bike and the smallest bike and hopefully everything in between. It's not a perfect method, but it did end up working out since a lot of my bikes are a smaller size. But as you can see, if you have a road bike or a gravel bike or a non-mountain bike of any sort, it definitely kind of stands out a bit. And these racks are rated for up to 77 pounds so they will fit most e-bikes on here as well 
So as you can see, I have my newest Fido e-bike here. This one is 40 pounds and feels perfectly fine on this rack, so no issues here, as well as, of course, the Trek Powerfly I just mentioned. I think ideally I'd want to adjust some of these and maybe move bikes around since sometimes if you have, like, super wide handlebars, like on my Fuel EX and my Slash, they'll kind of hit each other. Um, it's not a huge deal to me yet, so I'm not going to... Not gonna go through that right now, but that is something to note. And of course, all of these bike racks do swivel side to side, and that is the main feature of these. So instead of struggling to get a bike out from the middle and trying to dodge the other bikes and their handlebars, I can just go up to the bike I want, move the other bikes kind of out of the way left and right, and now it's super easy to just pull out the bike I want. And when I wanna put it back in that rack, all I do is just roll up the bike on the back wheel, kind of use the rear brake to control the bike, and then slide it into the rack without having to lift it much or at all. And another feature of these is that you can save floor space by angling all of these bikes to one side so they fit diagonally on the wall, and now you got some more space to walk. Uh, in my case, I don't need more walking space. I'd rather have the corner space for some more storage, so I have the bikes just facing me like this. So overall, if you can't tell already, I love these bike racks so much, and I definitely think it's one of my favorite bike-related purchases ever. Had to save up some money for it, and these are not cheap by any means, but you pay for a quality product, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, so once again, thank you to Steady Rack, and thank you to all of you for watching, liking, and subscribing. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, but for now, remember to keep biking out there. <laughs>